introducing the new EcoFlow River 2. EcoFlow creates eco-friendly power solutions that allow you to have power in any location in the world. With thoughtful designs and lightweight features, we deliver smart and powerful energy storage products that can be used for a variety of daily life purposes, from home backup, outdoor adventures, to on-the-job needs. The River 2 provides 300 watts of continual AC output and can boost to 600 watts for starting appliances with the X-Boost mode turned on. The lithium iron phosphate cells are rated at 3,000 recharge cycles and through advanced battery management can be recharged in just 60 minutes from AC mains or 3 hours from a solar charging system. Pressing the power button, we'll notice that out of the box it came with a 31% charge, which is enough for me to do load testing on the unit before we recharge it. I'm also going to hook it up to my oscilloscope. We'll take a look at the waveform and I'm going to put the unit into an overload condition to see what happens. First, I'm going to start using my heat gun. Now, this draws around 600 watts on low, and as you can see, it starts my heat gun, but the output drops to 305 watts, as this is a 300 watt unit, but it does provide enough surge to actually start the appliance, and it is producing heat. Let's take a look at the waveform. Here's a look at the waveform under no load, and I'm going to turn on the heat gun. The voltage dropped to about 90 volts, but the waveform still stayed clean, proving its ability to, even under overload condition, to provide a clean waveform. However, the voltage will drop slightly. We'll also notice that the frequency did not budge. It's still at 60.3 hertz when it is operating under extreme load. I'll now turn the load off and we'll watch the waveform return to normal at 123 volts. I'm now running a 150 and a 100 watt incandescent light bulb. We're drawing a total of 246 watts. I'm gonna add another 60 watt bulb to bring this up to a full 300. I've now loaded the EcoFlow River 2 with 300 watts of incandescent power and the waveform is clean, 120.3 volts at 60 hertz. Once the battery is depleted, it'll shut off automatically. With 360 watts of mains charging available, the River 2 will fully recharge in about 60 minutes, which is five times faster than the competition. This is even faster than the older River products, which took up to 1.6 hours to charge. This is due to the new lithium ion phosphate battery and the advanced battery management system that monitors voltage, temperature, and current during charge. The battery is designed for 3000 charge cycles, which means it could be used every day for 10 years. The River 2 provides multiple methods of charging. It can fully charge from your car in three hours, three to six hours from solar charging, one hour from AC charging, and yes, it will charge in five hours from USB-C at 60 watts. We're at the 50 minute mark of the charge cycle. According to the time remaining, it's gonna be 14 minutes, which means it's gonna be just about an hour and four minutes, I guess. Power has dropped down to 247 watts as the batteries come up to the full charge and we're at 94%. Charge is now completed. It took a little bit over an hour. It took an hour and five minutes to get to 100%, although it is pretty cold outside today. We just had a big dump of snow, so it will be unable to test the solar charging as there's no sun and it's about minus nine, and even in the shop, it's only about five degrees Celsius, so that may have affected the charge time slightly. The River 2 can operate as a backup power supply, and in this case, it is plugged into AC, and the AC is being passed through to the output. As you can see, I'm drawing 295 watts right now off of the AC mains. Now, if power is lost, it will switch over to battery in less than 30 milliseconds. The switchover is fast enough that it'll prevent computers and other sensitive equipment from shutting down in the event of an AC power failure, as I'll demonstrate when I remove the power. We don't see any flicker or any alteration of the light output from the incandescent bulbs. We did see a slight power increase because the actual output of the inverter is a little bit higher than the mains voltage I'm getting, as right now, I guess with a lot of people with their furnace and heating and so forth going, my mains voltage has actually dropped to about 118 volts, and it went up to 120 when I unplugged it. Plug it back in, and it'll switch back over, and now we're back onto mains, and it'll actually recharge the battery again as soon as the power is restored. Interrupt the power again, and once again, we're back on battery to show how quick it actually is in switching over. This is a standby supply as opposed to a UPS. As a real UPS, the load is always running on the inverter and the power supply is what's feeding the inverter. So there's no transition. The River 2 switches in less than 30 milliseconds. On the previous shot, we saw there was 39 minutes remaining on a full battery, showing that there's six minutes remaining and we've been running for 32 minutes. So it looks like we're gonna get our full 39 minute runtime at full rated output. 
And there we have it. Exactly 39 minutes. Now I'm going to connect it to my DC power supply. I'm simulating solar charging with 29.9 uh, volts, which most solar panels will operate in that 27 to 29 volt range. As you can see, uh, it is charging at about 109 watts and it's showing on the meter that it's going to take approximately two hours to charge the battery at 30 volts. So if you have a 30 volt solar panel that's capable of putting out 110 or 120 watts, you would expect it to fully recharge in about two hours. As I dial the voltage back, we'll dial it down to about 13.8 uh, volts, which would be the what you would find in an, your car, for example, with the engine running. And we'll see that the time to recharge has now increased to five hours. We'll also notice that the wattage has dropped to 50 watts at 12 volts. The River 2 can also provide AC power output while it's charging with a DC input, such as from solar or from your car battery. So now the DC power is being converted up to 120 volts AC to power the light bulb. Doing this obviously will increase the charge time and now the charge time has increased to 10 hours because I'm giving it 110 watts in, but I'm drawing 100 watts out. So the charge time is going to increase if you're using the AC inverter when you are powering the unit from DC. Other ways to charge, USB-C. If you plug a USB-C adapter into the EcoFlow River 2, it will recharge the battery up to the capacity of the USB-C charger. In this case, it's a 45 watt charger. It will support up to 60 watts of USB-C charging. I'll grab a couple of other USB-C chargers to show you how that works. This is a 25 watt USB phone charger. And finally, a 60 watt charger, which will show you that it's charging at 60 watts and the charge time will be shown in a second here as to how long it's going to take four hours to charge the battery from a 60 watt USB-C charger. Let's pop the top and see how well this unit's put together. I should point out there's no usable serviceable parts inside so nobody should be going into one of these things. There are hazardous voltages inside. That's just a disclaimer. Looking at the circuit board, we'll see that the board itself has a nice uniform conformal coating which will keep moisture and debris and dust off the circuit board itself. Saying that, you're not gonna get a unit like this wet. You don't wanna take it out in the rain. This is, needs to be protected from moisture and water exposure, etc. But the board itself is coated to prevent corrosion and so forth just from humidity. Looking down at the board, the construction appears exceptional. If we look down at the board, you're going to see one large 450 volt, 180 microfarad rated capacitor. That is part of the sine wave generation circuit. It uses a DC to DC inverter. In other words, it takes the battery voltage, which is 12 volts. It steps it up to approximately 350 volts DC and then uses the bank of transistors mounted on that heat sink right next to the filter capacitor to generate the pure sine wave AC output from that 350 or or so volts DC generated by the inverter. In this shot, you can see the lithium iron phosphate cells below the battery management board, which is the board right over top of the batteries below the main inverter board. To recap features, fast charging zero to 100% in about 60 minutes off of AC mains. Solar charging in as little as three hours and five hours charging from a 12 volt source or USB-C charger rated at 60 watts. It features 300 watts continuous AC output with a true sine wave inverter and standby switching with less than 30 milliseconds. So your computers and connected devices will continue to operate. 3000 charge discharge cycles to 80% capacity so you could discharge and charge every day for 10 years. It also features both Wi-Fi and Bluetooth connectivity so you can using the app control specific functions such as turning on the 600 watt boost capability for starting larger appliances. This can be accessed locally from your phone using Bluetooth or if it's located in your Wi-Fi network at home, you can access it from anywhere in the world. If you're looking for something similar on the market, EcoFlow provides the best choice. For more information, click on the links below.